I don't think I ever told this. No, I didn't. Even in the photography stories, I didn't mention this. I feel like now is a good time to mention it, though. Because I feel like I'm going to forget this story one day. But after I stopped working with Sham and FaZe and all this stuff, I still had a couple obligations here and there, right? I mean, all the connections were with FaZe for the most part. There's still a couple things here and there that I was like, okay, I'm going to do this and do this and then slowly ease out of this because I was still, you know, in, in those habits. And um, there was this final photo shoot that I did and I brought along um, Mosin because I needed help. I feel like having two two photographers or two videographers is just, it's 10 times better than just doing it yourself, doing it alone. It's a hundred times better. It's exponentially better the more people you have. After a certain point, it's diminishing returns. But two is, after working in a pair for way too long, I would never ever try to do a photo shoot or a video shoot alone, ever. Uh, that's like a very, very specific thing. But I shot for Zade. I showed him earlier the okay it's Zade thing. And um, I talked about the whole... Che Young MDK, you know, buying buying views like view botting, right? For or like like co like botting, comment botting on his Instagram. That's what that was for. There was like this like um, producer bus, like uh, uh it but engineer bus, whatever. But like this dude would um let like it was a studio bus. You go in there. There's like a little studio booth in there, and you cook up in there, and it's like supposed to be like a gimmick, like novelty thing or whatever. And uh, his name started with like a PH or something like that. Like f f something like that, f f psychic or something, I don't know. And um, I actually got a pretty cool picture with him, but I don't know where it is anymore. But um, it was Zaid and J Young MDK that were there. And Sham just showed up. Like he just showed up in the bus super lazy, oh, what's up, and then, um, started getting pictures of them, and all that, and I'm like, at this point, like I mentioned in that previous story, like, I'm here to focus, right, I'm here to get shit done, I have a goal in mind, if I deviate from that goal, there better be a damn good reason for it, <clears throat> so we go outside, we're about to leave, and we're taking pictures still, you know, in the outdoor environment, it's like late at night, and Sean was like, oh, get some pictures of me, get some pictures of me. And then Mosin's like, okay, cool, 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 I'm going to get some pictures. And he calls me, oh, get some pictures of me. And I start to snap some pictures, and I'm like, I joking, I go like, you're going to pay me for this, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he looks, like, uncomfortable after that. And he's like, actually, I'm, I'm about to head out. And then he daps up and then leaves. And um, I never got paid from that. I didn't expect to, but... That's also be pro probably because I didn't actually send any photos. Um, I mean, it's not like he would have responded to my text anyways. He didn't respond to my text, like, ever, you know? So, but that just, like, that was just a habit. Like, he never responded to my text because he just never saw his text. He never, like, checked his text. Like, it was, like, a low-priority thing for him, you know? I think for people who have, like, that much going on in their lives, even when people text them, it's, like, people work on their schedule. It's not, like you're ever going to, like, miss anything, you know? And, and the things that you do miss are probably not that important. So it's just a different lifestyle. So, yeah, I knew, like, he's probably never going to check my text. It doesn't really matter. And it would be weird for me to take money from him after all the stuff that, like, you know, we've done for him and he's done for us, you know, being the guy, like, the client. It would, it would be weird. I was more saying it as a joke. But at the same time, I was also kind of being half serious, like, I'm ready to make money from this. If there ain't time for me to... If, if, if I can't make money from this, then um, there's no point in me doing it. So I kind of like made that clear. And before this, we were getting paid very, very sparsely. And um, it's been quite a while since then. It's been quite a while. Faison works at Icebox. He records music videos for pretty popular people. He just recorded a music video for Gucci Mane. And uh, he's 21 years old. He just bought a house, half a million dollars. So I'm not going to imply anything. But 
I made it very clear, like, hey, I consider myself a valuable person. And if you want my value, you're going to have to provide me some value in return. Otherwise, you're going to lose me. So I just felt like adding that because I didn't actually share that in my photography stories stream when I was talking about Sean. But that did happen. And that is relevant to what's going on right now. I'm a valuable photographer, even though I'm not so great. But I thought about it. I was thinking about it earlier today. What makes you valuable as a photographer isn't your skills with your camera that, you know, it takes you six months to master or the equipment you have. Oh, I have the Peter McKinnon nomadic backpack to carry 17 different lenses of like, it, you don't need any of that crap. And, and, and having it, cool. It honestly doesn't make that much of a difference. But what really, really makes you stand out from other photographers is everything else. It, it takes you only a few months to master photography at an acceptable level for Instagram, for clients, for brands, for individuals, for, for concerts, for whatever it might be. It only, it, it only takes a few months, you know, if you want to learn specifically jewelry photography, macro, uh, extremely, uh, uh, like low shutter, light box, very, very high exposure, several different exposures, different polarizations, um, um, with very, very tiny, very slow aperture so that you get everything, but longer exposures and, uh, everything is in focus. You know, you want to develop these sorts of styles. It's going to take you a little bit longer, right? But in general, you can be a, a, a jack of all trades in photography and videography, in like six months, you can be a master of most of these things in like six months and be prepared for basically any situation. Oh, you're going to have to do a, a birthday. You're going to have to do wedding photography. You're going to have to do this. You can be prepared for any of it after like six months of practice. You can be good for anything. Landscape and travel and, and cars and all of that stuff. You can be good to go. But after that six months what separates the people that have been doing it for six months versus 10 years is all the other auxiliary things around photography. Like for example, music. Like I don't make music, but like I understand music. I can talk music. I can speak that language. And so when I'm in the studio with rappers and producers and all this stuff, I'm able to talk with them and get along with them and make jokes with them and understand how they're going to move and understand where the, the song is going to hit and where I need to, have the camera, you know, have its like shake and things like that and, and, and make the camera have bounce with their bars and with it, where they stop. And I'm, I'm going to be able to understand all that because I understand music. So the camera skills alone is not enough. You have to also have rhythm. I'm also, a lot of people, a lot of people are scared to drive expensive cars. Now, being a good photographer also means just being a good all around person, a good assistant, a good everything, a person that comes in clutch. Whenever I'm out with clients, a lot of times being clutch is driving cars because like a lot of people if they if, you know if they crash a nice expensive car they're responsible and 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 they're scared not me i've whipped around everything from from like the baby miatas to like the giant f-250 platinums everything from like you know the most comfortable luxurious butter smooth cars to like the roughest you know go-karts on the road basically I can drive stick shift. I can I drive stick shift too. A lot of these people have stick shift cars. They're, oh, you can't drive my car. It's a bit of an inconvenience. Oh, which is it? No, I got you. I could drive you. You could, you know, chill, gamble on your phone, do whatever you got to do. I'll be a good all rounder. I can come and clutch when people, I'm cool when people smoke weed around me. Many people who don't smoke weed, you know, because they want to be productive, they don't like when people smoke around them. I don't care. Look at me, I'm skinny. I hardly need food. I hardly need water. I hardly need space because I'm so small. I hardly need sleep. Um, like literally the photo shoots I did earlier, it was a Wednesday. So that Tuesday, I messed up my sleep schedule where I was um, basically, what's it called? Going to sleep really early and waking up really early. 
and the photo shoot was at 6. And 5 p.m. was around the time where I was going to sleep. But I managed to stay up, didn't even need any coffee or anything, did the whole photo shoot, came back at 11.30, and then um, went to sleep immediately. And then I woke up after about an hour or two, because my sleep schedule was like that, my circadian rhythm forced me to wake up. I woke up, I was awake the whole day on two hours of sleep, and the next day the photo shoot on the Thursday was at like 6.30. Again, I like, you know, left at like 5.30, got there, showed up. Um, I did whatever I had to do, and then I got back, and it's like 12.20. The next day, Friday, it was like 12.20 a.m., and uh, I got back, and I went to sleep. Like, when people need me, I didn't drink coffee either the days or anything like that, even though I had prepared. When people need me, as a photographer or whatever, I get so excited that I'll stay awake. I don't need much sleep to operate on, on, on things like this, and when it comes to work environments and I got to get stuff done. I get stuff done. If I truly see it as important, I get it done. I cannot work in a real estate office and and still have a good, you know, sleep schedule that I enjoy having because I'll be tired in there. I fall asleep because it's work that my brain tells me this is not important. You could sleep. Sleeping is more important than this. But when I'm doing, when I'm recording music videos and stuff, I never, ever, ever feel tired no matter how little sleep I have. I could be operating on two hours of sleep one night, the next night, four hours of sleep in a total of a 48-hour span, and I'll still be good the next day. So I don't need, I don't even need to use the restroom all that much. I can go three days without using the restroom and not even break a sweat. Many other people are very high maintenance, you know? Like, if you're, if you're a rapper and you want to go to the studio and your photographer needs to stop at the restroom on the way there, you know, it's just an inconvenience and the inconveniences add up. I'm not super low maintenance, but I can guarantee I'll always be lower maintenance than everyone else around me. Always. I will always have more patience in the waiting room without our phones. I will always, for playing chicken, I'll always hold it out longer than the other person. No matter what. If it's a, you know, if, if they, if they grew up in an environment where it was a lot hotter and, you know, the, the room is super hot. I'll put up with it. I'll never complain. And I'll only say that I'm uncomfortable after they say it. After they think it's a problem. I'm always lower maintenance than the other people around me. I'm a very, I like to be a very accommodating person. I don't mind running through the rain to get someone else's groceries. I grew up as a younger sibling. It's just, it's how I am. I get it from my mom. I just like being supportive. It's what makes me happy. Helping other people, even in very menial things, makes me happy. When we were growing up, probably because I was the younger brother, you know, we were playing video games. And let me mute this. And I would be the one, you know, running upstairs to get snacks for us. When he'd say, hey, go, go, go get us some snacks. Go get us some snacks. It was never my brother. It was always me. Always me. It was, oh, we need batteries for the controller. Okay, I'll go get it. I'm used to this. I'm okay with coming and clutch for people, even if they won't do the same for me. It's like, I'm across the board, I have many, many other skills. If you have a photographer and they won't come and clutch for you, they won't, you know, oh, I need to go, uh, can you buy me some backwoods from, from the gas station or whatever? And they're just like, nah, nah, I'll just chill here. It's like a very... It would be much more convenient to have a photographer that's slightly worse, but can do all this stuff for you. I'm not afraid of bugs. I'll always kill bugs for people. Sometimes we're in, it, we're in environmental bugs. I don't care. I'm always covered in bug bites all the time. I'm not... Okay, I'm afraid of bees, hornets, and wasps. That's what I'm afraid of. Because they move faster than me. And their stings are hellishly painful. But if there's a cockroach or a spider, and they're like... Go kill it. I'm not a pussy. I'll kill it. I'll step on it. I'll do whatever. I'm so low maintenance that I lower other people's maintenances. I'll take maintenance away from other people. Oh, I got to be maintained. I need to have my bug killed. Don't worry. I got you. I'll lower your maintenance. That's how low maintenance I am. I've always been like this. I was so clutch. 
you know, when, I, when I'd go to school and I'd buy everybody else snacks because I was making so much money, I'd buy them snacks from the main events. Or like, you know, uh, when, when my friends needed to do a drug test, they needed to do piss tests, I would pee in cups for them. Because I, would, I wouldn't smoke or drink or anything like that. And so um, I would never do that sort of thing today, just to make that clear. Like I'm not a minor and uh, I don't know what kind of penalties there are for that. And I don't want, see, I, I, after the blood tests and stuff that I've done, I have quite a few like medical deficiencies. I don't want someone else's kids to be wrongfully labeled as like someone that a doctor needs to keep an eye on or something like that, right? Like, oh, this kid has extremely low HDL, extremely low albumin, extremely low whatever, whatever. Parents don't didn't care about that back then in school, you know, in high school and stuff. Parents didn't, like, bro, you could be dying with cancer. Parents wouldn't care so long as you're not smoking the devil's lettuce. You could be missing an arm and they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't even notice. But um, nowadays, I would never, I would never do something like that. But I, I, the spirit of coming in clutch was always there. I never get tired of driving. You need me to drive you around somewhere? If you got to drive from Atlanta to New York, no problem. Just tell me if you want to uh, stop to use the restroom. And uh, that's when we'll stop for gas. Otherwise, we'll just keep going. I don't even need to use the restroom. I'll just stay in the car the whole time. I'm not, I'm not picky about food. I'm not allergic to anything. Like, the thing is, in order to be, like, what I'm trying to, in order to be a traveling cameraman, you know, someone who goes from, oh, let's fly out to Miami and do this, oh, let's fly out to LA and do this, in order to be that person, you have to have a very, very high discomfort threshold. Actually, you don't need to have a very high discomfort threshold, you just have to have a higher discomfort threshold than everyone else that you're with. Because... If you have that, if you have a higher discomfort threshold than all the other people that you that are your clients or other photographers that are with you, then people want you to be around them versus the other photographers and videographers. You be competitive, you win the competition, you win at life. And when it comes to having like being competitive in this regard, in this particular industry, I will always come out on top. You will not find another photographer that will be able to handle more than me. Unless I'm with FaZe, then he wins. But other than like that one specific case, yeah, I'll beat out every other photographer, videographer, every time. 